Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Ash and its features to create an outdoor scene for Arquiz. I will cover the benefits of the new AI tagging system, how to use the scattering tools, edit materials, and more. I'm Tomasz Nagy, and I'm going to be your guide in this video. So let's go. First, I gathered some images for inspirational purposes based on my ideas. I would like to create a modern house integrated with some old ruins in the middle of a grassy landscape. I'm starting a new project and a new empty level. I open the Dash toolbar and click on the Browse Content Library icon. Here I can find my downloaded Megascans assets, all the content from Polyhaven and also my own assets, but I'll talk more about it a bit later. From the Polyhaven HDR library, I select an HDRI that I like. I have some favorites. I choose one from those. I set the resolution and drag it into the scene. Now our space is lit up. I created a simple house model with some placeholders that I will import into the project. You can find it in the video description. I set the lighting by rotating the HDRI. I add a directional light into the scene and set its rotation to align with the HDRI sun. I drag in a post process for you. I set it to unbound and adjust the exposure. In the dash toolbar, I type in camera to create one. I roughly set up my composition. And I adjust it a little. For this scene, I downloaded a few assets from the Epic Marketplace, such as the Rural Australian pack and the Backyard packs 1 and 2. I've imported the downloaded asset packs into the project. I can search for the asset I want to use, but I need to know the name of the asset, or I can do some filtering by type, for example, I'm looking for a static mesh or a material. This is where Dash's new AI tagging system comes in. Dash creates tags for the assets. So I can search also for properties, not just names. I click on the AI tagging button, which brings up the content browser. Dash detects all of the assets in my project. I click on the compute button, to start the process. This may take a few minutes. All my assets are available, organized and ready to be easily dropped into the scene. So let's search for some trees. Or I can search only for the red assets. Or green. Also, I can combine tags, so let's search for chairs and the color orange. It's that simple. My next step is to create the grassland. I downloaded some vegetation from the Vegascans library. I quickly delete the placeholder and use Dash to generate the terrain. I adjust the parameters to my liking. For this scene, I generated a simple flat terrain. I drop in the grass texture from the Dash library and set the UV scale. It's time to start applying materials to the building. For the windows, I simply drag in the glass material from the starter content. By default, the glass shader looks quite bad. If you want, you can set the translucency to ray traced for a better look. I 
I downloaded some 3D scans from the Megascans library as well. I want to generate some odd, crumbling stone walls to surround the modern building. I drag this rock into the scene. In the dash toolbar, I type in scatter, and I'm gonna use the grid scatter for now. After selecting my rock, I click on the plus sign beside the instance mesh, and also beside the grid origin panel. Now I scattered my rock. I quickly set the parameters, and click on the random spin option for a more natural look. And voila, we have our stone wall. Later on, I scattered some plants on it, which will break the repetition more effectively. Now I duplicate it a few times. In most of my images, we have overgrown vegetation, so I place the rock model next to the wall, and I'm going to scatter some bushes on it later. I drop in the rock I used for the wall into the scene, along with two other rocks. I will scatter them using the physics tool of Dash. I type physics to the Dash toolbar, and this brings up the physics bar. I select the rocks and set them to dynamic. I set every other object that I don't want the rocks to fall through to static. With the rocks selected, I click on paint. By pressing down both the shift and the middle mouse button, I can adjust the brush size. And then by clicking the left mouse button, I can paint some rocks. I can adjust the position of the rocks by holding down the middle mouse button. Let's create a path. In the dash toolbar, I select the curve tool. I set the minimum spacing between points to 50, then, after pressing the Start Drawing button, I draw a curve freely by hand. I can also adjust the curve points individually. I drag a Megascans model into the scene. I'm going to scatter it along the curve. I make some quick adjustments to the material. In the Dash toolbar, I select the Path Scatter option. With the model selected, I click on the plus sign next to scatter, and after selecting the curve, I press the plus sign next to curves. Or you can just drag and drop it on the curve, that works either. I can adjust some of the parameters to my liking. Now we have a road. I will scatter some rocks along it. I select my terrain. In the content browser, I select the desired elements, then while holding down Ctrl, I drag them over my terrain. I click on the Scatter on Selection option. I would like to scatter the rocks to appear only along the edge of the road. To achieve this, I click on the Proximity Mask 1, select the road, and click on the plus sign. The rocks disappear from the road. Now, I click on Invert and adjust the Distance parameter. After that, I click on the Proximity Mask 2. I select my curve in the center of the road and click on the plus sign. I adjust the distance parameter to mask out the rocks that we don't need. I also adjust the density of the rocks. I want to scatter another rock model in the same way. I apply the same method. After that, I scatter some vegetation along the road as well. And in just a few minutes, we managed to create a nice little road. Next, I select some plants that I will scatter on the terrain, creating a lush grassland. Holding down Ctrl, 
I scatter the plants, and with the help of proximity masking, I can select where grass should not appear, such as on the road and under the building. Let's see how the scene looks now with the path tracer. As you can see, our vegetation is not visible in the background. I can fix this with two simple console commands. For now, I will hide my grass. I scatter some rocks around to fill up the space a bit. Now I want to add some trees in the background. In the dash prompt bar, I type in plane, which generates a simple plane in the scene. I scale it up and place it behind the building. I will scatter some trees from the Australian asset pack onto this plane. Now I can easily move the trees around using the plane. I will add a few more trees to the composition. It's time to scatter some vegetation on the rock walls using the well-known method. I want the bushes to only appear at the top of the wall. I can achieve this with a height mask tool. I will duplicate this for the other side as well. And I repeat the process for the other walls too. Let's add some bushes to the large rock as well. Here a bit denser. The vegetation completely covers this rock. And I also want to place some plants in between the rocks. I found the sky a bit boring, so I experimented with a few other HDRIs. This one, with its nice blue sky and fluffy clouds, looks much better. Let's throw in some props from the assets library and search for them with tags. I will also add some decals to our building, making it more interesting. I will scatter some bushes on this rocky ground model to break up the grassland and make the ground more diverse. I generated mesh in Blender with holes in it, which I will use to simulate the sunlight filtering through the clouds. Finally, I apply some color grading. And after some adjustments, here's my final result.
So that's it. I hope you found some useful information in this video. And if you like Dash, consider joining the Discord server where you can share your artwork and get fresh information about future updates. Take care. Bye bye.